Okay, so again, we're talking about retainers and these next two questions have uh, come up about kind of like negative things associated with retainers. Uh, one is um, how, what if you get pushback from a client when you're trying to sell a retainer? And then the other is how do you bail out if you know it's just not working? And so um, on, on the one hand, um, what if you get pushback? Uh, I don't necessarily see myself as a good salesperson. You know, I learned from my coach, uh, Chris Doe, he says that if, if you say it, then you're selling, but if they say it, then you're closing. And so when I'm talking in my initial meetings or during discovery, uh, and we're talking with the client, the, the goal is for the client to have landed on the solution and then present it to you as if it were their own. You're guiding them to that point, but you're not uh, necessarily wanting to, to deliver that to them. You're wanting them to come to the uh, conclusion on their own. So since you want them to come to the conclusion on their own, then the question is like, okay, what if you get pushback? So the, the reason why I say this, I don't get a lot of pushback because I'm not pushing forward with anything. I'm, I'm really just asking the client a ton of questions. I let them know for sure what's available. Uh, and then I, I ask them, you know, where do you fit in regards to the, the services? Uh, and they usually come to the answer themselves. And so I'm not a good salesperson. I don't have like great rebuttals for, you know, giving pushback. Um, the goal is for you to do enough digging and discovery to where you're helping the client land on the solution. Most of the time when clients come to you, they know that there's a problem that needs to be solved. And so if you do a proper job of educating them uh, about the, the process that needs to be followed, which is, you know, first start with the strategy, then we can design and create and basically execute on that strategy. Then the, the third question is like, what happens once we execute that? And so let's just say, for example, you're uh, designing a website or you're designing brand identity or you're doing you know, something. The question is like, w what is the end result? How does this tie into your marketing? What, what do you guys want to accomplish with this? And so for, uh, for the example of a website, you know, designing a, a beautiful website and then just leaving it alone is kind of like designing a, a really beautiful brochure and then putting it in a closet. It does nobody any good unless it gets in front of the people that need to see it. So then I might tell that to the client, like once we design this beautiful website and we spend all this money into it, what's your plan of attack of getting people to visit that? And then they'll ask, well, you know, what are your thoughts? And then that's when we could, you know, start talking about additional services that might go past the initial scope that they're coming to you for in the first place. And then the, the second question was, you know, well, what, how do I kill it if it's not working? And so like, if I get myself into this retainer, it's not working with the client, uh, what should I do? And, and I'm a, a firm believer in open and honest communication. And so if it's not working, I definitely want to make the client uh, know that we don't feel that this is working. And you don't want to be the one to just take a client's money and have it not work and then them come to you and say, this isn't working. If you can be the first to the one with that, it's gonna uh, lift your integrity and your perception, their perception of you in, in, uh, in their mind because you're being honest and people like working with honest people. And so uh, this has happened to us, for example, we, we um, strategized, we d developed a, a very comprehensive thorough strategy for a client. It required about 40 hours of work per month and we were on that retainer for a while. Well, this um, particular client, it was extremely hard to get things done and, and get a hold of the right person. They were, they were going through some organizational transitions, people were moving around, and so it wasn't uh, very clear who our point person was and who was gonna be executing on the things that we needed feedback on. And so at the end of the month, we would spend like 10 to 15 hours when they, they prepaid for 40. And it wasn't for lack of us trying, we were, we were putting basically you know five extra hours into just trying to get a hold of people. And so after the second or third month, of us going about that I had a conversation with the client say look this isn't working these are the things that we wanted to execute on these are the things that we strategize we're not able to do that let's kick down your retainer because we are using about 10 to 15 hours let's keep it at 15 these are the things that we can for sure do uh, and then once there's some organizational uh, restructuring that happens uh, if it makes sense then we can increase from there and that spoke volumes to the client because uh, we're being honest and we took a pay cut and the reason why we took that pay cut was because we, we wanted to make it work for that client uh, two months after that, the organizational uh, transitions that needed to happen did, and uh, we were able to increase our retainer back up to 40, and we've been, we're serving that client to this day, and we're able to fill up the amount of uh, work. And so uh, when it comes to the pushback, I don't get a lot of that because I'm not pushing forward. When it comes to killing a project if it's not working, just be honest and communicate with your clients. They're gonna re re appreciate it and respect you more for doing that.